afternoon. Good afternoon, Phil. Lovely um, to see you again. Thanks very much for joining. Um, no for those who don't know, uh, today is, I'm speaking to Sean, and Sean is a retired teacher yeah. who now s- takes some time to uh, indulge in some live music promotion. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's where we are now. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks very much for doing this. No, you're very welcome. Um, you're very welcome. So if, if you don't mind, we can start with the teaching yeah. side of things then. Yeah, so yeah. Um, how long were you a teacher and when did you start? Wow, oh, dear me. Well, I, I, I finished, I came out my training in. Uh, July 88 and then I started work in September 88 September. and I and then I did 34 years at the, mm-hmm. at the chalk face as people called it right um, okay yeah most of that I did my my first year I did it over in North Shields at uh, Thomas More mm-hmm. High School which is where I did my long teaching practice okay and then uh, halfway through that year a job came up at St Joseph's in Heaven and um, at, at that point I was just about to get married uh, mm-hmm. and my wife to be was living in heaven, uh, and and I, 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 knew, I knew of the school, so I decided that I would go for that job, mm-hmm. um, and got the job, and basically I I had I stayed there, and I and I had I had no real desire to to, to move on. I just felt mm-hmm. very much at home there, and um, I got married, and we we, 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 we got a house in Jarrow, so I was living uh, mm-hmm. cheek by jowl with all of the mm-hmm. all the kids, and it was it was one of those situations where. I was living in the community where I, where I, where I was that I was serving, mm-hmm. um, and it was my parish. My parish church was there, um, and then the, my sons came along, and they all went to the local, went to St Matthew's in Jarrow, and then yeah. they went. They came, and you know there was that thing looming about where they're going to come to come to the school where Dad was working, but they'd yeah. already had an experience of having Mom teaching them in the primary school. So, right. so uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that. But you know when I. The thing was, we, we had that conversation with them. We took them to a few schools and, and, and you know, they each said, oh, well, we're quite happy to go there. And they also knew of other, other mm-hmm. teachers' children who, sorry, other teachers who had children in the school. Okay. So they were, it gave me a little bit of an insight when they were saying, yeah, it's fine that the kids mm-hmm. don't get it. There's no uh, issues really. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a lovely place to work. I really enjoyed it. Started yeah. working under Bill Moran mm-hmm. uh, and, and then Bill retired. Uh, and the majority of my time there was under under Joe Campbell, who was I mean the the man was a force of nature. You know he was he was a terrific guy, so committed, uh, and and very very intelligent man with a really interesting background. You know he left school with no qualifications in Northern Ireland, then right. he kind of then went back to education, and mm-hmm. and then he ended up as a doctor of chemistry. And it was what it was, you know the kids were fascinated when he used to tell them that you know that he left with no qualifications, and yeah. and his journey about going from you know, how he then had to sort of like go back and reinvent himself. And that was fascinating, you know, and, and it was great to work with Joe. Joe was a, was a great man. Uh, mm-hmm. He did so much for the kids and the kids loved him, you know. Um, and under Joe, I mean, I, I was working in the languages department and then um, qu- quite happy then. Then up, this job came up for head of uh, personal and social education and, and you know, I'd, I'd never contemplated that. Okay. But I, I, it suddenly was something I, I, I got interested in, you know, was, mm-hmm. uh, once I'd been teaching the lessons and it was all about, you know, stuff that was the, the total counterpoint of the, of the academic work I was doing in school. It was kind okay. of personal development stuff and I got really interested in it. Yeah. Because I always believed that schools were about more than being exam factories, and it was kind of suited my personality. And yeah. and what we did was, uh, I went for the job and got it, and then I spent twelve years sort of building up that side of things in school. And and I had a lot of support from Joe. You know, Joe Joe was a man who was very keen on the kids getting good exam results, but he was also very yeah. keen on making sure that that they were well served in knowing what the world was like outside of academia. You know, and and learning mm. how to deal with with real life issues and yeah. and I enjoyed building up the curriculum and going to them and saying, Joe, can I, can I take a group of kids down to a drug rehabilitation centre in Shields and meet them? And he was like, mm-hmm. yeah, go for it. And the kids thought this is, you know, or can yeah. I, and I just doing stuff that was quite daring, you know, and quite interesting mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and stuff where it was just yeah, the absolute opposite of, of the academic squeeze that the kids were going under. Yeah. They'd have a lesson where they just could sit and talk about stuff that really mattered to them, about relationships, about about choices, about their lives and stuff, and about making safe, sensible, mm-hmm. thought-through choices. And, and it was great because um, the staff got on side with it. I did a lot of training with the staff, so I'd, I'd, I'd develop relationships with my colleagues from other departments because yeah. I was, you know, obviously with this, it was a cross across the school thing mm-hmm. and working with 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 people who try to bring them along to see things 
and that was really enjoyable, you know. Yeah. And they they, they they and they felt that they could then go into the lessons and do them well and mm -hmm. and give the kids a good deal. And I think that was very that was very good. And you know, it was perfectly happy to stay there. Uh, and I became a governor of the school and. Then I went and did some work in the RE department as well, and loved that. And did some work for the diocese and yeah. of Hexham and Newcastle, and and I loved it. You know, I mean, it, it, I had no desire to go anywhere else, and mm. uh, and just stayed there, which is quite unusual nowadays. I don't think anybody stays in a school for their full career now. I think that's no. that's very very much changed now. Mm -hmm. And then in twenty eighteen, just decided that I was just very tired. Okay. Uh, very tired, and and decided that it was it, this was not it was it wasn't an old man's job, you know. Mm -hmm. Or well, I'll 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 rephrase that. <laughs> the way I would do it, it it wasn't something I could do as an old man. Okay. I just felt that my energy was 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 waning, and I was mm -hmm. I was I was going to school, giving it a hundred percent, and coming home, and and, and yeah. I, I didn't have much left for me for my family, and that was something which I became more of an issue in my mind, and I thought yeah. I've got to do something about this. Okay. So just sort of retired from there mm -hmm. uh, and decided just to do a little bit of supply mm -hmm. uh, and then sort of, re re sort of reset my life a little bit and, and, and do some do some other things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah that was, that, that's pretty much a, a summary of how we got from there. To here. <laughs> you know, so there we go. A whistle-stop tour. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of a, of a, of a hell of a career. Well, well you know, I, I loved it and, and it's nice. I, I, when, I'm, when I'm doing the music now, I'm, I meet a lot of me former students around okay. the place and... You know, it's great. Uh, I think I think the best comment you can get is when is when someone comes up. To you. Well, first of all, they come up to you and want to talk to you, yes. which is nice. Yeah. Uh, and secondly, they come up to you and say, "Do you know what it is, Mister Conan? I, I I hated French man. I was I hated it, but you know, I really like your lessons." Yeah. And you go, oh, I couldn't. That just makes my day, it's, you know. And you go right. Yeah. I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah. Um, because to me, it's not, it's it's about all about the relationships, you know. It's yeah. not, it's it's you kind of if you learn a bit of French, it was accidental. Yeah. With some of the classes, you know, it wasn't really about that. It was about yeah. getting them just to be decent human beings, you know. I guess that's that's the thing, isn't it? That type of thing is a compliment, like no other. Oh, oh absolutely. You it, know. it, you know, that that kind of goes to the heart. It, I just think to myself, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Because they're basically saying that I made a connection with you on a human level. Yes. And it wasn't just an academic experience. Yeah. Uh, and that, to me, is what you know. If we not get all deep about it, but. You know, I, I'm of a generation in education where, it, to me, it was about... I felt that I was going in there and it was my job to kind of work with them where they were and give them a bit of experience that I've got, a little bit of advice, a little bit of guidance, mm -hmm. and, and sort of help them to just to, to understand themselves a bit more, yeah. to make healthy, sensible decisions about whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's why I like the PSHE so much. There was a, you, you, you got into aspects of life that were much more important than just exams, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and for them to come up and say, you know, you had a positive influence on my life and I, I'll, I, and I, it's so much so that if I see you, I'm going to come up to you and shake your hand and say, you know, hello, it's nice to see you, how are you doing? Absolutely. And, and that, that's, that to me is, is you, you know you've succeeded in your, in your role. Yes, uh, and that's not just defined by did they get a decent exam result. You know yeah, I mean? that's not defined by an A star or, uh, a, or no. a C minus. Which whatever. which are nice you know. as part of the package, but to yeah. me, it's it's the, the the more I got into my career, the less imp no, the more important the other stuff became. Yeah. Because I was still focused on getting a good result from them and teaching them well. Yes. But that got easier with experience. Yes. The bit that I was spent a lot of time doing was to build up the the sort of the the personal education stuff, which I, I thoroughly yeah. thoroughly enjoyed, you know. Yeah, producing you know fifteen, sixteen year olds who are well rounded young people, and making as you say, thoughtful, hopefully sensible decisions. Yeah, and that's all like you that. can do is, yeah, is yeah. just ask them to ask themselves questions. Yeah, and to tell them you're gonna get it wrong. I get it wrong to tell them that I've got it wrong to talk about you know my own experience. I had no issues with that at all. Yeah. You know I would tell them about you know I'd always talk about I'd always sort of kind of start a, a topic with them by talking about my own personal experience. Mm. You know how um, if we started talking about alcohol, I know every time I tell told this story, it 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 just you, you got a level of attention that you'd never normally get, and and mm. uh, and and. and you'd get everybody listening and looking at you, you know. Yeah. I'd say, you know, um, I thought my dad was the coolest man in the world because we used to go to church on a Sunday morning and we'd come straight out of church and go to the pub. Yeah. Uh, and 
asked her, and, and then I would tell them I was like 14 at this time and him and me brother and me would go into the pub and I thought my dad was the coolest man in the world Yeah. and he'd, he'd buy me a drink mm-hmm. and the kids are like what? And I, I said yeah yeah and he'd, he'd sit and we'd spend a couple of hours in the pub and he'd we'd just crack on we'd play a few bits of dominoes and, mm-hmm. and I said it was only later I realised how incredibly careful however how very very intelligent that was mm-hmm. to introduce somebody to alcohol in a way put it into context yeah. in a protected supervised manner mm-hmm. a responsible like you know legally he was breaking the law yes but in terms of being a good father and educating his son about the place of alcohol in your life and how it's in a social context and how yeah. it's all about being sensible it's mm-hmm. all about being measured yeah and uh, I tell them this story you know, and and, uh, and they love it and I, 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 that that thing about where you draw them in, you tell them a story about yourself because they're yeah. dead nosy, you know. Oh, they, they, they love to know about Sue. <laughs> and so what you do is, you, and I, I found that works. Every time I've done that, dozens of times, every yeah. time any group of kids I've talked to, it just generates that whole mm. discussion about yes. alcohol. And, and, you know, it's all about talking to them as about real life situations and choices. Yeah. And that, that's yeah. really, to me, that's where I got the real joy towards the end of my mm. career, you know. So that, that shifts slightly away from... The academic side, the learning oh, side, to the personal development personal side, yeah, needs. and that, that was a real, a real focus of interest for me. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can tell the passion that you had for it. Well, do you know what it is? It just, it, it just, when I saw how they reacted to those lessons, mm. and how they would, it, there was just a different level of engagement. Yeah. It made me realise how valuable these things were them, and then they'd come up to you and talk to you about it and say, oh, "I was great, I really enjoyed that." Or oh, what are we doing next week? Mm-hmm. Uh, or you know, it really made me think. Or that, and and I, I thought, right, this is this is where they are. This is what they need. Yes. Uh, and and I was very fortunate to be in a school where Joe Campbell let me let me mm. let me have a lot of freedom in what I did, and then. And then you look at um, five, seven years later, the government would publish documents saying, this is what a good scheme of work for personal social education looks like. Mm-hmm. And I had a great, great sense of, of personal satisfaction. And mm-hmm. I looked at it and thought, well, this is what I've been doing for, for the last seven, eight years, you yeah. know. Uh, and, and it was great. And, and then to go and talk to other schools about this, what I'm talking to you about, how, how, yeah. how, how to do it, how to put the things in place. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what that's the work I was doing with the diocese, with the other with other partner schools in the yeah. in the Catholic sector. I was going out and doing that, you know, and so quite innovative in the time. Then. It kind of well, I, yeah. I suppose it was, you know. I, yeah. I, it wasn't sort of a big ego pro, a, a project. It was just I just thought this is this is good for kids, you know, and and people came in and saw that it was and said, can you can you come and tell us how to do it? And, yeah, no problem. Yeah, and and that was good, you know. I enjoyed doing that and and, and kind of spreading the word outwards and. Yeah. It was lovely, you know, and I really enjoyed that. And yeah. uh, that's that's that was great, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All about producing those, as you say, those young adults that are hopefully well rounded. Well, you know, education's not just about passing exams. Mm. You know, you look at the you, you know, you can get all sort of um philosophical about it and kind of dewy eyed about it, but ultimately, you know, what are schools for? Mm. You know, what do we want our schools to be for? Mm. What do you want what do you want your kids to learn? What do you want what skills do you want them to have? Yeah. Over and above the uh, the exam results thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that that's something that you sort of get interested in as a parent, for example. You know, oh yeah, you yeah. Look, I mean, you look at kind of you look at a photo from this from a school in the nineteen forties, uh-huh. and it's rows of desks and a mm. teacher at the front with mm. the chalkboard, uh-huh. and then quite often you're going to a school now, and it's rows of desks. And a teacher at the front with a whiteboard. With a whiteboard. And it's like, okay, so uh, what's actually changed? Yeah, there? I th- I think you're right. I th- I think a lot has changed, mm-hmm. but there has to be a certain amount of 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 structure to the context, you know. Yeah. Where you you create an atmosphere where you can kind of get people to engage. Mm. But I mean, you know, there are there are times when I would move the desks around, or I'd or I'd, you know just do something left field like right we're going outside we're going to sit outside today yeah and and just and and just just mix things up a little bit yeah uh, for for the PSHE you know just to sort of make it memorable mm. uh, to get attention you know because I mean you, you, teachers nowadays when you, you, if you think about the the way in which you talk about 
computer generated imagery and all these yeah. this stuff that they see which is so incredibly engaging mm. in the games that they play and you know and what have you got you've 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 got your own personality and you've got your own way of speaking and you've got a few bells and whistles in the classroom mm. but uh, you know this is what when kids say what's oh, boring school's boring yeah. you think well it's not meant to be like all singing all dancing no. uh, entertainment but there's still a value in what's what's there but you're right it you know there's a structure that's still there uh, and if anything, a lot of schools are, are, are going back to a little bit more structure okay. uh, mm-hmm. environment. A lot of schools now, mm-hmm. back to uniform, back to sort of a, yeah. a, a stronger rules system. And, uh-huh. but I, and then I think it's the value of just having that sort of, this idea that there's got to be a, a kind of a pattern to, to every day and a, and a, yeah. and a structure that mm-hmm. has to be accepted. And that's a, it's, you know, because this is what life is like. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's, it's you wonder what you know how things have changed even though on the surface the structures haven't yeah uh, yeah, yeah. I wonder if um, you know the the curriculum for example i mean don't get me wrong I'm, i've got a massive admiration for the teaching mm. profession mm. um you know you talk about a, a battle every day you know mm. against social media from facebook to instagram mm. to twitter yeah yeah yeah, yeah. this Absolutely. instant uh, gratification that that that's kids yeah. seem to want these days yeah. and stuff, and you're fighting against that almost. To yeah, try yeah. And draw that attention in. Yeah. So massive respect and and fair bit of empathy for them. Mm. I just wonder if the curriculum overall kind of needs oh. revisited a little bit. Well, I mean, it's it's a sad reality that uh, when the GCSEs and uh, were um, were remodelled a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. They, they've kind of been quite retrograde they've gone backwards there's a lot more emphasis on academic skills okay so it it kind of is making uh the exam format mm-hmm. more inaccessible more challenging for those who are less academic yeah it's kind of targeted at the 20 percent who are academic mm-hmm. So the eighty percent who aren't are going to struggle to achieve. In that system, mm-hmm. um, it's. I mean, you know, I look at my own subjects. If anything, that you know, the, the languages has got, what's got. They've gone back to translation. They've gone back to, to stuff like English to French translation, French to English translation, like literally, like yeah. very very specific. And I'm thinking, wow, that's that's not just GCSE. That's O level. That's what I did when I was yeah. at school in the eighties and whatever seventies and eighties. Yeah. So. It's it's and anybody who's been in education long enough knows that the things just move around and they come back round again and then they move around again and yeah. there's never a kind of a the pendulum never kind of swings to the middle it always swings to one side or the other you know and and a lot of teachers, teachers nowadays would say that, that the curriculum is is too is too restrictive. Okay. The creative subjects are not given a lot of uh, encouragement, okay. um, and 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 when money's tight. Mm-hmm. And three kids in the year group opt to do music. Yeah. There's a very strong argument that music should not run. Yes. It's very hard for the head of music to go and say, let these three kids do music. Mm. Because the, the, the value for money thing comes into play. Yeah. So what you're talking about here is, is something which is kind of a little bit restrictive, very mm-hmm. sort of a bit of a, a bit of a, you know, straight jacket, perhaps yeah. for, for certain kids. Mm-hmm. The vocational education has, you know, the... They, they, they changed that so they had more of an element of ex- sitting formal exams rather than nth, than than mm-hmm. kind of um, ongoing assessment of practical skills. Yeah, and that's going to make it more difficult for the non-academic to to access higher grades in that. So yeah, the answer to your question mm-hmm. is the this the, the government recently has not done things to change the system of education the education system mm. in a way which helps the four-fifths of the population who aren't academic yeah yeah and that's a little bit scary I think. it's very worrying you know it's it's a little bit scary i mean but and even in all of that context you know there is somebody who could be completely academic mm-hmm. but when it comes down to exams they just go to pieces absolutely so even though they could do the work mm. and could prove it through yeah. two years of continual assessments yes yeah. 
when it comes down to two years of work and then one exam and they go to pieces. And and now and more custom. more subjects now uh-huh. they've gone back to this. There used to be modules where you'd learn the stuff, you'd get examined on it, you'd never get examined on that again. Now it's like the, it's it's a cumulative exam. It's in one exam or two exams at the end of the course. Yeah. So two years work for every subject, mm. and that is tough. That is yeah. very very tough for yeah. the vast majority of kids. Absolutely. And that that therefore means uh, you know that it's going to filter through that. You're going to get a lot of more kids who are alienated, who are put yeah. off, who are who are just they can't access that curriculum. Yeah. And it needs to be looked at more carefully. Yeah. Because there aren't the um, the vocational courses and the practical courses in every school nowadays. There, there aren't. Yeah. They're squeezed. Mm. Um, and what you need is you need to. Ideally, you need a you need a school that offers the full range of things for, yeah. for the kids and, and doesn't sort of shoehorn them into something that's near enough. Yes, it actually offers them something mm. that's that's actually accessible and valuable and useful to them. You know. Yeah, but something that interests them. You know, if there's something that interests a kid. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna engage more naturally. Absolutely. They, I mean, know? you know, I'd I'd be the first. Uh, I, I love that at Joseph's when 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 Joe Campbell would would brought in these things like the you know he altered the curriculum so that he blocked things so that kids could go to college, mm-hmm. okay. like to do hairdressing or beauty yeah. therapy or and 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 they used to get dressed up in their stuff at lunchtime and the, and the, they'd be proud to walk around. Oh, I've got me stuff on because I'm going to college. Mm. I've got me. The girls would have their white things on for the yeah. going to, and they had a sense of purpose. Yes. And you'd get the you know you have the ones who were going out to do sort of uh, you know, you know bricklaying, plumbing, mm. uh, st- and, and and stuff like that. And you'd think, you know, or oh, car maintenance. I mean, how va- these people are very valuable to us. You know, these these roles are valuable to yeah. us as as a society. Mm. But it's like you know, I'm not going to get political about it. But but does the current government understand the ordinary kid in an ordinary school? That's the big debate. Well, I think that I don't think there's a lot of debate about that. To be honest, I yeah, think, I, I think mean, the answer is no. Well, that's <laughs> but, it. But they're know. making decisions which are binding upon schools, yeah. and, and and you know, as, as school management must be. They, they get very creative as try, trying to stretch the rules as much as they can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On the kids' behalf, but. Yeah. You know, you, as soon as you as soon as you get to, yeah. to a certain point, you then get you then get in a big trouble if you're not doing what the what the what the government wants. Yeah, you know? and and all of those, you know, those subjects that you mentioned and, and others like them. You know, those are the people who, through COVID, if you like, those were the key workers. Those were the ones keeping the country running. And, I, and, you know, I, and things you know, like that. So it's yeah. You know. There's a whole. I mean, this is a massive debate, but it's it's all about the philosophy of yeah of how you view. Your society, isn't it? Who do you Absolutely. value? Yeah. Why do you value them? Who yeah. should we value? Should we have a reset? Mm. Is it all about just being academic? Yeah. Uh, and also the idea that you can't make someone, you know, how far can you make someone who isn't academic succeed in an academic curriculum? Mm. Yeah. Because remember, schools are judged on exam results. Yeah. And then money is about the number of kids to get to the door. Mm-hmm. So if you're judged on exam results and your exam results aren't great, yeah. your funding goes down and what happens? You can't have decent class sizes. You can't offer the wide curriculum that you need to do, yeah. and then it spirals downwards. Yeah, yeah, and it it feels like as an as an outsider looking in, well, as a parent looking mm. in, um, it feels like over the last ten, twelve years, the funding's been cut dramatically mm. over the over the years. You know, so oh. and, and, and all you get from the government is we've never invested more in education. Yeah, but you know, it's the same thing. Same with NHS. Yeah. The, any public service, all they tell you is they're putting more in. Yeah. But you know, it, it's it's they never address the real issues. No. Because no, it's no. it's too expensive to address the real issues, and of course, yeah. it's all about the philosophy of, of where yeah. you stand on. Do you really want to to do that? I think there's a there's a political agenda there as well. I think yeah yeah I think um I, I remember um talking about this with somebody a while ago and and you know and their viewpoint was well look Phil. Who's going to educate you well enough to overthrow them? No, well, okay, I suppose there's an argument in that as well. Very interesting. You know, um, so, you know, but it, it's it's interesting to hear about that curriculum side of things because, mm. you know, again, again, as as the world changes now, you would I would have thought, 
appreciate that there's always going to be a point where you know you've got to have your basic English and mm-hmm. maths and mm-hmm. one or two with that general subject I, I get all of that but I think there could be a focus now more on the stuff that you taught and 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 mm. what you drew forward as in those life skills now you know leaving school mm. understanding what or at least having a good general understanding of how taxes work what's uh-huh. the difference between in the longer term renting a home or having a mortgage Absolutely. you know the, mm-hmm. the 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 life stuff mm. if you like mm-hmm. you know but it doesn't even feel like that's touched on well no i mean you know so you get things like you know, it just that gets squeezed in the curriculum as yeah. well. You know, it's a case of, um, well, you know, an hour a fortnight. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Which is, you know. And if it's present, if again, all due respect to teachers, but if it's presented badly and it's not made interesting mm-hmm. because the teacher's not really buying into it for whatever reason, or yeah. they're not really motivated to teach that because their focus is this subject. Yeah. You know, there's all of that those was, types of things. That was, the, that was the big, not the battle that I had, that was my big challenge to, okay. to when I trained people, it was in this, it was a case of, right guys, let's just step back a minute and let's look at why we're doing this. Yeah. And let, let's, let's look at how, what is our job in this school? Is mm-hmm. it just curriculum departmental based or is it wider than that yeah um and and this is part of 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 what we feel schools are about so can we get on board with it i'll train you i'll help you do it i'll give you loads of support Mm -hmm. but i need you to on on behalf of the kids not to do it for ofsted you're doing it for the and and that argument worked you know when you when you kind of said to them do it for the kids yeah because it was often the group tutor the registered tutor who would who would and those are the kids who um who you really saw most often in the school. Yeah. You saw them every morning, mm-hmm. you saw them first, you know, and, and you looked after them and you, 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 you did a bit of that. And it was that person who taught the PSHE. Okay. And in a way, you kind of said, well, look, come on, it's part of your job as a tutor, you know. You, you know, th- that time isn't isn't departmental or curriculum time. It's it's yeah. it's 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 looking after your little, your group of kids in yeah. school that you're responsible yeah, yeah. for. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, why do we do that? Do you think that's important? Why is it important? If it is important, therefore, doing this with them is important. Yeah. And 95% of the people either were, were already on side or would eventually go, do you know what, you're right. Yeah, I yeah. Can't get that. Mm. And that was, that was important. And yeah. Because, you know, it's the classic thing of, if not in school, where? Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, because they've got to get home and put their Xbox on and, and do, the, do whatever else uh, is and, 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 you know, mm. a lot of them won't have that kind of formal kind of nurturing environment that, mm. that, that, that we'd all hope that we give our kids, you know. Yeah. So it's it's mm. tough and it's, it's mm. you know, if, if if not now, when? If, if not in school, where? You yeah. Know? yeah. So, that, that, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, it, it was a big challenge. It was a massive challenge. To be yeah. Honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was it was something I was very very passionate about and I still am. Yeah. And, and um, uh, it was something that that did have results. Yeah. Uh, and that's what kept you kept you going when you felt you were kind of swimming against the tide of, of whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, but to take that from an idea, a formative idea, and effectively a blank sheet of paper. And it literally was to so, to yeah. build that up to where you where you were engaging with people mm. you had all of these ideas you had for that people saying mm. can you come and tell us yeah. how you're doing that you know that in itself must have been hugely rewarding as well it know? was massively rewarding it really was when you know i'd be asked i went and they asked me to go and speak at some quite big conferences and i was mm. just like okay i'll do it then. <laughs> and and it was funny because i it was only then when 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 i i just sort of talked about this stuff and i would say to people I would suddenly in the middle of the thing think that I would actually stop and I'd say, like, please tell me if I'm, if I, you know, if I'm just telling you how to suck eggs here. Yeah. Because to me, it, this just makes sense. And people would say, you're not telling us to suck eggs. But it's, we all kind of know this, but we didn't have it at the forefront of our kind of, um, mm. our, because cause of other things in, or getting in the way. Yeah. But, you know, and it was interesting, the sort of, and people would just at the end of everything they'd say, you know, yeah, I think this is valuable. I do, I do see mm. that we need to do it, and it was good that then, because I think teachers at heart want this is what they want to do, you know, yeah. and and, yeah. and they don't want to be just focusing on the academic and mm. and because to be honest with you, there's not there's an, there's some satisfaction you get out of that. Yeah, more, I got so much more satisfaction out of dealing mm. with the 
the real sort of um, mm-hmm. life skill stuff that I that yeah. I focused on towards the end, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed that, and it was mm-hmm. it was nice, and it, that it was very rewarding. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not a kind of a self satisfied kind of. It was more to do with the fact that you could see the effect on other people. Yeah. There was a concrete effect, a palpable effect on other mm. people's. Just they, they came and told you that yeah. it was working well for them or that it was interesting yeah. or they enjoyed it or it made sense to them. or yeah. And that's what you want, you know, that's all yeah. you want to do. Yeah, yeah, job satisfaction is its highest, I guess. Absolutely. Because you know, what's better than helping someone make it, make their life happier and mm. better and yeah. less problematic and... Yeah, and and that, and I think as a as a parent, that's one of those things. In in every parents' night I've ever been to, I'm not too bothered about how they're doing. Frankly, mm. I'm bothered about are they well mannered, are yeah. they respectful, yeah. are they getting on with people, yeah. are they doing okay socially? Right. Absolutely, that's my questions. Yeah. We can talk about whether you got an A or B or yeah. a C later, yeah. or or you can put it on a piece of paper and send it home. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's more about. Yeah. How's he doing in the yeah. classroom? Yeah, you know, in the school in general. I mean, my, that's a funny one. For I, I got to the point where I, I used to, when I used to talk to parents of parents unions, um, mm-hmm. I changed the way I did it. I, right. I would always start by talking about the person, mm-hmm. talking about the kid. Yeah, and the number of times that I had parents say to me, "Wow, you're the only person in this room." who has started talking about my son or daughter as a human being. Yeah. And I would then go on and talk about how they were doing. Mm-hmm. But to me, the most important thing was to let them know that I was interested enough to actually get to know their child yeah. as a as a person. Mm-hmm. And then if I ever had to be critical of the, the child's behaviour and attitude, yeah. they were much more open to that. Absolutely. Because they felt that I was actually, I had a kind of a, a real vested interest in them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was lovely that the reaction I got mm. from parents they were just like well that's original you know yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not sort of well you know in their last test they got this yeah. blah 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 blah. it was well can I just say that when, and, and you talk about them as a yeah. human being their yeah. personality the way they go on yeah. the way they behave yeah. their manners yeah. their attitude their interaction yeah. with other people yeah. uh, and and you'd let them parents know that I'm, I, I do know your daughter I do yeah. know your son yeah yeah uh, and that that's a, makes a massive difference to parents. I think that it's huge as as a parent. That's absolutely huge to me. I mean, the last one I went to for my youngest son, mm. um, and we went and sat in front of one of the teachers, and the teacher said, "Who are you again?" Mm. And that didn't really get that sort of little and, chat off to a good and start. And was he sitting there beside? He was sitting there. There was me and my wife and my son. Wow. And he went, "Who are you again?" I and mean, I even thought, if you yeah, think that, okay. you, 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 I can't see how that saying that out loud is going to help anybody in the. Well, even if you're not sure, I would, I would just kind of maybe scroll up and down the register and say, I cannot find you, and wait for one of the parents to maybe point the child's name out or something like that, somewhere around it. To me, uh, but it didn't get off. I th- I, the it word that comes to my mind, so. that's unforgivable. That like, yeah. I would, but you know, but. I wouldn't want to be critical. No, you no, never no. know, but yeah. uh, th- th- I would hate to be in that position. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it wasn't good but never mind never yeah. mind it was what it was so mm. um, but it, I, I much prefer that approach I want to yeah. know how they're doing as people yeah. the, the academic stuff we'll, we'll, we'll worry about later yeah. is he okay is he engaging in the oh, class you're absolutely right Phil I, th- I mm. think that, that that's that also sends a message to your child mm. that it's all about the person yeah, yeah, and and yeah. schools about it's about person, yeah, personal development. It's not just about academic success, and yeah. and sometimes some of the parents who sit in front of you, you, you kind of find yourself having to, sort of, subtly and very very cautiously, mm-hmm. ask them to shift their expectations or their their viewpoint on their son or daughter, who they tend to be just seeing them as as uh, an exam sitter. Yeah. Passer, failer, doing well, not doing, so, and thinking, please don't define your son or daughter just yeah. by that. Because if you send the message to them that that's all you're thinking about, yeah, yeah, then it mm-hmm. you're setting yourself up to be to be so yeah it, criticized by this your child, or they're going to feel that they're not being valued. From, yeah, you know. yeah, it's 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 definitely an interesting one, and obviously every parent does their best. Every parent absolutely has their own opinions on things and mm-hmm. stuff like that, but. If, for me, it's kind of very much like 
it's just do your best yeah. you know mm-hmm. if your best means you get a D fair enough oh, if your yeah. best means you get an A hey great you know that's exactly what I that was my f- in lesson one with every class I had listen yeah. whatever you are I don't compare you to each other mm-hmm. I just want you to do what yeah. your best is whatever that is mm-hmm. whatever that is whatever whatever you end up with yeah you know and, but what we don't want to see is wasted wasted opportunity and and you know mm-hmm. and that to me is, is crucial crucially yeah. important absolutely yeah. absolutely and, and and it's it's that you know i forget that i forget the name of the drone but it's all the animals lined up Mm. And it's like you know if you ju- I think it's if you judge a goldfish by its ability to yeah. climb a tree, yeah. it'll live its life thinking it's thick or so- yeah, something yeah, along those exactly. lines. Yeah, exactly. It? It, it depends what 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 what, yeah. what criteria you apply, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you know, you might not be good or interested in science, mm-hmm. but you're a hell of a good woodworker, and exactly. your hand-eye coordination's fantastic. And, uh, I always tell the kids you know? how, how I wasn't good at everything, but you know, the, the, the result I'm most proud of is my my B in all level of maths because I mm-hmm. knew I was. T- terrible at it but yeah. I worked incredibly hard with the help of a great teacher yeah. and you know I've, my, on, my, my degrees my A levels nothing is as valuable to me as that because I that was what I had to work for so yeah. hard and I tell them that story you know and, yeah, yeah. and that it's funny that it sticks in the head you know but, yeah, um, yeah yeah that's it but it brings you into the room as well it's not just sir yeah it, you, know? I, you know that was something I was very comfortable with and yeah. I think the more the, the, the feedback from the kids was that you you know he's interested in us as a person yeah and 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 then that defined their way they would relate to you yes and that's why I never although I lived right amongst all the kids never had eggs thrown at my windows never had it never had my car tires let down mm-hmm. I it, it was I was perfectly happy meeting the kids in the street and in yeah. Morrison's and where mm-hmm. I didn't have a problem yeah yeah. Never had a problem, and I think that that just meant that I think that there was that kind of respect there, mm-hmm. uh, uh, of the fact that they knew I was on side with them. Yes. Uh, and yeah, I might be have very high standards. Yes, I might push them, but they knew that it was it was just about. It was all about it. This is for your own good. Yeah, you're not you're not pushing them for you. No. You're pushing them to be the best version of them in whatever area. And whatever no. to whatever level that that yeah. that, that is possible, yeah, absolutely. And you're, you're, absolutely, and I think they felt that, and I've, I've and that, that's the message I've got from a lot of people who I've talked to subsequently. That, yeah. that when they come up and they, and they say, "We love your lessons," you know, yeah. and, and we've gone, "Oh, yeah, you were you're a, you, you, you were you were a canny bloke," and I think, "Well, thank you very much." That that, that to me is a de- definition of a successful yeah. uh, career. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. I wonder what percentage of teachers get that. <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah. not. Not many, but the ones who would put themselves and they don't get it, I, I kind of the question would be, uh, to what extent are you your own worst enemy? Yeah, yeah. And which, you know, or, or are you prepared to look at different ways of doing things that mm-hmm. might be beyond your comfort zone, Yeah. but will have big results for you yeah. in terms of um, your experience with classes? Yeah. You know, if you look at... If you redefine your, your your definition of success and satisfaction to yeah. include other things, mm-hmm. and you widen it out, yeah, then you may have more of a chance of having a better having more better days, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's you know it's easy looking back after thirty four years. And I know that at yeah. the beginning of my career it wasn't like that. I didn't you know I was, mm-hmm. I was the academic one, and, yeah. and suddenly you know it it evolved and. And that's interesting. Mm, uh, absolutely, I think that, that's evolution in your job, your career, and in your life as oh, well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But I, I mean, the downside of that is, and I think that's where we're going to sort of steer the conversation, mm. is uh, it demands a lot of a person. Yes. Mm. You know, if if you if you become good at relating with young people, mm-hmm. they will then knock on your door at break time when you're yeah. when you need a break. They will come and say to you, "Sir." I, 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 I need you to help me with something. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I there's something I think you can help me with, mm. and you, you, you kind of be careful of the monster you create. Yes, because it will demand of you, and and sometimes it, it you know, they'll come and you, you'll do about relationship stuff, and you'll you'll do about 
the basis of, of, of healthy relationships and you know I've had I've had lots of kids come to me and and then I've had to put me um my safeguarding hat on because they've, they've said stuff to me which I've had to pass on and which has been a real concern but I'm yeah. so glad they did because they were in a difficult situation they were they were in a, a very vulnerable situation mm. but it takes it out of you emotionally it drains you yeah uh, and and you know when I said to you that I I, I retired early mm-hmm. Um, I, ju- I just I just thought that I just was was exhausted, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So the the downside of doing it this way is mm-hmm. that it, it emotionally and in terms of energy it drains you, and then and then sometimes it does get to the point where it's not it get it gets beyond that point where it's healthy. Yes. And yeah. you end up having to take time out. You end up. Have mm. struggling with your own your own sort of mental health and yeah. and you kind of your head's too full and you lose that perspective on life and yeah. Um, so what what sort of supports available within the teaching profession around that sort of mental health type type of thing there? Well, I've got to tell you that I think that it's, it's the classic microcosm of society. I think I think because teachers are very good at acting. Mm-hmm and projecting an image in the classroom it's kind of very difficult Mm -hmm. in certain circumstances for individuals to to say they're struggling yes i think a lot of teachers struggle for too long and often they only then Mm self-refer when it's really really extreme or they've actually crashed and burned okay um, I think there's the, there's a perception that you will be judged as someone who can't um, manage. Yeah. Therefore, people are worried that's going to affect their their promotability. Okay. If I've just invented a word there, mm-hmm. um, it might affect the way they are viewed by management. Okay. Um, um, and also there's kind of, and I hate to say this, there's this is another issue. I think. There is a tendency in there is a there are in many schools, mm. teachers would say that management are not sympathetic. They are distant. They are not really that interested in the well being of their staff. Okay. In practical terms, they they mm. they'll have policies which say they are, but when yeah. it comes to it. There's a combination of not wanting to self-refer, mm-hmm. not thinking that you'll be understood, thinking you'll be judged badly, think, thinking that you will be sidelined. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of it, you know, is um, is done, it's peer support. Okay. You find people on the staff that mm-hmm. you, you, you click with, that you're friends with, that, yeah. you, that you relate with, and, mm-hmm. you, and you kind of... You muddle a lot of people muddle through mm. with the support of somebody who is perhaps more experienced, someone who understands yeah. them well, mm-hmm. who might signpost them. Okay. Um, I mean, there there is mental health support in school, mm-hmm. but it's kind of it's there, but people are hesitant to access it, and um, right. and they're also the, the unions offer sort of helplines and and support. Okay. Um, but I would say that I would say the vast majority of, of mental health support for teachers is done by other teachers. Okay. Yeah, that's quite a, quite a concern though, you know, about a few of those issues, but oh, also yes. that the teachers um, may well wait until it's almost too late, if you like, they've crashed and burned because of the potential stigma of that Absolutely. around it. and and. <laughs> the conversation that should hopefully continue to to be around mental health is it's not a bad thing to talk about it you know mm. the, the the slogan it's okay to not, be, not okay. be okay and all that sort of stuff I, th- I think it sounds like that's still a, a I think it is a big issue I think it is um, um, I genuinely think that um, that there is an issue with mm-hmm. conversations being able to be had yeah um, and I think people are worried about I'm going to cause issues mm-hmm. in my department and in, in the school by not being here or needing to take some time off yeah. or by um, not being able to 
complete all of the tasks that I'm doing that I've been asked to do yeah. because I've over, I'm overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And there's also a, a, I think a well-founded perception that if you go and say I'm struggling, the answer will be you've just got to manage your time better. Okay. So a despite lot, what all of those policies say, they'll, they, they'll kind of knock it back to you and say, right. well, I think it's an issue with your time management. Yeah. You know, um, and I think a lot of people would say that the vast majority of, of schools aren't a place where that conversation would be sympathetically uh, received. Wow. Okay. And I think that that's why a lot of people end up breaking and taking a lot of time off yeah. or leaving the profession. Right. Wow. Okay. They'll break and not be able to go back. And just leave. Yeah. yeah. Just find something else. Yeah. yeah. Or be literally unable to go back. Wow. Okay. That, se- that seems a real, um, a real shame on the face of it then, that there's not that level of support, you know, that... Um, for example, somebody like yourself, somebody who spent a long mm. time in teaching, mm-hmm. you know, to to maybe so an an educational authority come to you and say, "Listen, Sean, you know, part time, can you do us a couple of days a week and go into these three, four schools mm. and just support the teaching staff, you know, and mental health wise, just talk mm. to them, give them a bit of time and space." Something like that, even you know, as a yeah. you know, you're not related to the school directly. You're not directly on the yeah. on the um on the staff, so to speak. You're just kind of that support work yeah. after that. And if there was something that you could help with as an experienced teacher, great. You know that might be enough. If not, then you know, mm. okay, we'll refer you. Same post it yeah, else. It's same post it. I Good. mean, personally, it's funny well, you mention that because. No. Uh, before we started this, I was saying to you that in when I retired, one of the roles I had was 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 as a cover supervisor, yeah. which meant that I didn't have to. I I was, it was I found it very I found it fascinating because I would I would I would turn me hand and use my experience, but I'd be going to any lesson. Yeah. I could I'd be, I could be doing sixth form psychology. Next yeah. lesson I could be doing year seven science, and I've got yeah. year nine art, and I've got and you'd bounce around the different departments, and what you'd do is you'd go in and you'd. You'd, you'd facilitate the learning mm-hmm. of an absent colleague. Yeah. Uh, they would leave something, and you'd, you, you, and I look, you know, I had the experience from coming from teaching that I was, that, you know, and, and I gave it a good shot. But mm-hmm. it gave me a great perspective on on being a teacher when I wasn't one, but yeah. I was in a school. Mm. So I had been a teacher. I wasn't anymore. I was still in a school. I had a different role, and it gave me a, a very interesting perspective on, on how people coped being teachers again. Mm. Uh, in 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 uh, in schools and I I I found myself just kind of doing a little bit of troubleshooting. I'd I'd once I got to know people really well uh, better. Yeah. Sorry, mm-hmm. I would I would then say to them, they'd come in and and they wouldn't look great. I'd say, "You're right. I'm having a good day." And they'd oh, just I'm struggling. And mm-hmm. I would just let if they wanted to speak, I'd listen to them, and I'd yeah. I wouldn't try I wouldn't try and be intrusive. But if uh, I would. If they asked me for any advice, I'd, I'd say, well, perhaps you might think about this. I'm yeah. a little bit of sort of informal counselling, or I'd say mm-hmm. stuff like, right, listen, um, stay here, I'm putting the kettle on, I'm making you a cuppa, yeah. have your drink, mm-hmm. I'll go and look after your class for 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No Tell judgment. No, no judgment. Ju- just or something like, you know, it's in, oh, I'm really struggling, I've mm. a bloody bus duty, I'll go and do it for you. Yeah, well, yeah I'll, I'll do it for you, man. Yeah. And then I started this thing where I just, on a Friday, I just, I would go and buy a bag of chocolate bars mm-hmm. and I would just go in and I'd just put, sprinkle them around the staff room. Yeah. And people would walk in and this is typical of teachers, man. You buy you buy them a, 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 like a, you know, those four for a pound uh, that are offered <laughs> yeah. in the supermarket, right? Yeah. You'd, you'd buy a few packets and put them out in the staff room and 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 honestly, it's like you'd given them a, a check for a thousand pounds. Yeah, they could wow. sit down and have have a bar of chocolate. Mm. And you know, I wasn't doing it. I sort of, I just did it because I thought it's a simple thing I can do. And, and the mm. the effect that had. But that that's got nothing. It's almost nothing to do with anything other than I'm a human being. Yeah. And I and I 
shown a bit of empathy and a bit of support to a fellow human being. It's just, you know, I know where you are. I know you. I know what you're feeling. Mm. I know the pressures. Yeah. And what would I appreciate? Yeah. I'll go and do your duty for you. Yeah. I'll listen. I'll go and look after your class for you. Stay here. Yeah. You know, you you don't feel well. Just right. Take take five minutes. Mm. Do you think you should? Take tomorrow off. What's yeah. what's the problem? Yeah. And just try and do that. And oh, if so, uh, the younger staff, if someone was struggling, and mm. and then and I eventually was, people would talk to me and and they would ask me, oh, "Have you got five minutes?" Oh yeah, I'll come. And I just it was lovely to have that time where I wasn't rushing around. Yeah. But I was still working and doing. But I, I was co- it, it was something that was in my comfort zone. So I had. Yeah. And you know, people said, "Oh, you, you, you know, it's really good that you're doing that." I said, well, mm. "Just help people out." It's it's just it's helpful. It's supportive. A little bit of coaching. A little bit of yeah, advice. Whatever they need. Sharing so, ideas from a from your perspective. You know. So so it's it's almost like it it's a shame that, you know. That doesn't happen more. You know because you think how many teachers who have left the profession, or are on the sick from the profession. You know for the sake of having somebody like that mm-hmm. in their school mm-hmm. overall. What a difference that one person could make, almost. Yeah. Well, the thing is that school budgets do not allow for that. Mm. You're meant to kind of see your line manager, and, 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 and that's an academic relationship. It mightn't be someone you get on with. It mightn't be, mm. you know, luckily a lot of people get on in the department. Yeah. But if you didn't, mm-hmm. or, if, or, if was, or if they weren't your type of person, yeah. the official channel... You've got nowhere to go, so you, you rely on informal channels about helping each other out. Teachers, are, they do a lot of work in the background to help each other out. Yeah. To look after each other. Because they do that because there's, there's not a great deal of structure there, formal structure to help them. Yeah. There's nobody in... They, there may be someone who's like, on their job description, staff well-being. But, but you know, they're, yeah. they're a teacher themselves. You, it may be a senior teacher who you don't yeah. want to set that Absolutely. thought process running about... Yeah. Uh, you know, ability to cope, ability to, to, to be efficient. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you know, and also that the, the, the budget isn't there to have someone yeah. who just troubleshoots for the staff. Yeah. Um, and now that people say, well, they should have someone in the local authority. Remember, schools now operate differently. You've got, mm-hmm. um, you've got um, ac- academy trusts, yeah. so the local authority doesn't have control over a lot of schools, and the academy trusts perhaps don't have people in place for that, yeah. and, and they have their own rules about the way they do it. So there's kind of not a not a consistency across across school, you know. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, I think that's a real gap. It see it feels like a real gap. If you've got something, you know, I don't know how many people are on the staff at Saint Joseph's, for example. Your well, that was school. Quite, that was a, I mean, if you're talking support stuff, you're, you're talking about 150 people okay. in a big, a big uh, mm. 11 to 18 school, yeah. 150, 170 people. Mm. So if you have even one person there who's able to do some of that mm. and then perhaps even a, a recognised outside support worker and a recognised counsellor, somebody mm. like me... You know who you refer on to if you think it's necessary. Yeah. You know that feels like a huge gap. It is. It, 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 everybody would say that's a brilliant idea, but then eventually, when everybody somebody would then say, "But how are we going to pay for it?" Yeah. Who, how how much is it going to cost? And who's going right, to pay what, for it? What are, what are we going to take out of the school? Yeah. To do this. Yeah. Because the yeah. budget is sliced yes. in very thin slices. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to spin this round, um, you know, there have been schools where when a chain, when, when, it's, when they look at budget requirements, mm-hmm. they, you know, they may have support staff, mental health support staff mm-hmm. and pastoral support who aren't teachers yeah. and are social workers or, or, mm-hmm. or, or, or counsellors. Uh, and then as soon as we talk about budget cuts, mm-hmm. the first people out the door are those people. Those so people. the kids yeah. lose mental health, pastoral, yeah. personal support. Yeah. And and then, of course, it's back to that thing, if not in school, where? Yeah. yeah. So once again, you're kind of... It's, it's, it, it's an injudicious spending of money mm. when you cut support services in schools yeah. and you folk t- in order to fund the academic yeah. side of things well mm. back to that 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you've heard of this type of model before, um, but a few years back when I was doing my counselling training, mm -hmm. I did a bit of time up at a school in Morpeth. Mm -hmm. um, and what they did was they had one member of staff who worked four days a week and ran a, a counselling service within mm -hmm. the school. So she was a brilliant, brilliant woman, uh, Sarah Watson, she was called. Um, and she ran this the this um the sessions okay so she worked four days a week she worked Monday to Thursday mm -hmm. there was two counselling rooms in the school mm -hmm. and within that they had trainee counsellors because you have to do as part of your counselling qualification mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. do supervised hours yeah yeah so Sarah was a supervisor as well yeah. as a counsellor so you would get volunteer counsellors in mm -hmm. free of charge mm -hmm. and they would see between five and six students a day. So there's sort of say 10 to 12 appointments a day yeah. on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, mm -hmm. and a Friday, the day where Sarah wasn't there, there was still mm -hmm. sessions running. They were available to staff mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that so effectively it was an inbuilt counseling service in the school. Oh, that's, that's funny. For the cost of one person. Because they used well, because counsellors in training sometimes struggle to find placements and things like so that. So it was it was a win win, so, and that you don't so get many of those, do you? It was a massive win win. Now that kind of model, to me, makes total sense. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's something that you'd either heard of or no. I, but I th I think it's a model well worth exploring as yeah. long as long as there's this the supervision and the uh, due diligence there that that um, yeah yeah yeah. That, I mean, you know, and I think that uh, yeah. I don't think you'd find anybody who would think that was a bad idea. Yeah. Um, because you know uh, that's gonna have such a benef beneficial effect. Because mm -hmm. those kids, if they get listened to, if they get some input, if they get some support, yeah. they're going to be in a better frame of mind. They mightn't go to lessons and kick off. They mightn't go and upset somebody. They might. They mightn't go and go and send off some horrible stuff on online, which then yeah. blows up in, in in the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and then also they may access some support, which will help them um, with whatever issues they've got. Yeah. I think that's a fabulous idea. It's a great model. I think, I think it should be something that it, that should be widely promoted, and then mm -hmm. and then then. Uh, Head teachers should be should be told about this because I bet there's there's quite a lot of head teachers who would buy into that if they knew mm. it was there. Yeah, well, I might. Uh, I wonder who I could talk to about that. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I think uh, yes, I certainly think that you could you know have a chat with with that lady and then yeah. and talk about you could you put a little paper out somewhere and then yeah. and then just do a mail drop the schools. Yeah, I think I think that's a thing. I mean, and I mean, it was all it was all regulated. You know, she she was obviously the full time. She was mm -hmm. qualified supervisor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So she was she did the the monthly check ins with mm -hmm. with the trainees. You know, it was all monitored. We had to have our DBS checks and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. So it was all well regulated as well. Yeah, so, which is, which is um, yeah, and and that wow, I think that's a fant fantastic use of resources. That and. Uh, and within the school, mental health was a it was a conversation. It wasn't stigmatized. There was nothing about it. It was it was great, you know. And it was on the agenda. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was in the ethos, yeah, which, which is what you, which is what you need to do. Yeah, that's the way it ought to be. Um, yeah. Whereas coming back to the, when you asked me about how it was, yeah, which is is the polar opposite of that, where yeah. it's kind of hidden and it's 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 mm -hmm. something which is. Because let's be honest, if you are struggling, mm -hmm. to then feel you must hide that struggle yeah. um, is, is an additional pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and absolutely. it's not at all healthy. And it's, it's, it's kind mm -hmm. of, you're talking sick, sick building syndrome there. You yeah. really are talking about a community which, is, which, is, mm -hmm. which isn't, hasn't, got, not, hasn't got firm foundations, you know? No, absolutely. And I mean, a lot of, the, a lot of them were kids in, in the last year in school heading into exams and feeling the pressure and feeling yeah. the stress of that. But when you talk to them about it, and uh, you know, and maybe say, yeah, but I think I should be studying four hours every night. It's like, well, when when are you gonna get the chance to be a fifteen year old lad then? Whatever <laughs> you know, and, and do what you want to do. You yeah. know, you you know, you you play for the local rugby club. Mm -hmm. You surely there's a night's training. Well, go and do that. You know, yeah. enjoy that. 
and then explain the benefits know, of that. Uh, you know, the, 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 the three hours you the use goodness. there will make the other hours easier to get through, of and you'll, you'll be more profitable. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest with you, Phil, I mean, you could you could you could apply that same logic to to the, the staff who would go in and say the yeah. same things. I'm working yeah. four hours a night. Yeah. When have you got the chance to be? Yeah. Uh, a, a, a husband, a, a wife, husband, a, a, wife that, a father, you know, a mother, which, yeah. which uh, or um, or to be a, a twenty-two year old who needs a life and needs to establish yeah. good patterns of yeah. of, of living mm-hmm. in your career, yeah, yeah. so that you can stay in your career. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because yeah, a yeah. lot of them, a lot of them leave because mm-hmm. they just say it's just too full on. Yeah. Too, everybody I talked to, oh, I was a teacher. I left. It's it was just mm-hmm. it just took over my life. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it, it's a case of well, okay. It's challenging. Let's acknowledge that, but let's look yeah. at how we can actually, actually manage it effectively. Yeah. And share ideas on that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's a wider perception of, oh, it's easy. You know, you get six weeks off oh. and all this, that, and the other. I think there's a wider perception of that, which, it, to be honest, it's something I've never bought into, but I, I know people have had I, I think so there are fewer now after the whole idea when they all had to become teachers during yeah, lockdown absolutely uh, I think there's absolutely. A, I think there's a lot of that but yeah. it's it's like anything else you know we, yeah. we stood we stood and we clapped the nurses but then um, then as somebody once said you know um, yeah but clapping the nurses doesn't cost you mm-hmm. when when you then say well okay if we value them that much let's pay them a decent wage yeah yeah oh well that would be too expensive yeah you yeah. know yeah. clapping costs nothing Yes, again, we're back to that political, you know, the political. I, w- I was a key worker, now I'm just a greedy union member who exactly. wants a pay rise. Uh, and, you know, and then okay. you, yeah, you, and then you, you so, criticise for taking action. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, people yeah. have very, very short memories, very yeah. short memories. Absolutely. But it's the same issue. I think, I think ultimately it's, it's about how do we run our society. Exactly. Yeah, what do we yeah. value? Yeah. If we value that, yeah. then we have to. It's going to cost us. How do we pay for it? Yeah. We do it this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and why do we do it? If that's what's going to be hard, because you said you value it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, getting back to what you said about mental health, I think, a lot, uh, I mean, when I had my issues, I, I, a lot of mine was, self, was, was self-help. Yeah. A lot of mine was um, knowing, uh, like, exercise. I mean, I'm sitting here now uh, because I know that if I don't exercise during the week, mm. my head gets cloudier than it, than it needs to be. Yeah. When I exercise, mm. my 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 head is clearer. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel better about myself. I feel fitter. I feel sharper. Yeah. And it just gives me that. It just it it gets the chemicals in the brain nice mm. and settled. It gets plenty of oxygen in the brain. Yeah. And I think that. It it massively helped me when I was having tough times when I when I was when I was literally exhausted. Mm-hmm. It was it's it's counterintuitive, but the more mentally exhausted you are, you get out and do some physical exercise. Yes, yeah, physical health and mental health very closely related. And it's related. very yeah. difficult to, to, for people to understand how you feel you have no energy, mm. but but exercise which knackers you gives you energy in this area that doesn't make sense. And you'll say, try it, and you'll yeah. understand. Yes. And there's that whole thing about looking after yourself, mm-hmm. looking after you, you know, factoring, factoring exercise and or whatever is your place of joy and 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 relaxation. Yeah. It could be playing music. It could be singing. It could be going out and running marathons. It could be yeah. wherever you find your joy and your switch off. Yeah. Do it. Factor that in. Because you know the benefit of doing it and the drawback of not doing it. Exactly. The price of not doing it, mm-hmm. but the, the payoff of doing it. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a combination of taking responsibility to a certain degree. Yes. But yeah, yeah. one of the things about being mentally unwell and being depressed or being anxious is that, and sorry, this is more for uh, the listeners than it is, because I know you know no, this very well, Phil. Right. That depression robs you of the ability to do what is most beneficial for you at the time absolutely yeah. so you know what you need to do is find as as i don't know if you're familiar with claire week's work the famous psychologist mm. who's written the, the best-selling books on this yeah she says you need to find a trusted friend yeah somebody who knows you inside out who you can rely on who will guide you who because sometimes you literally need somebody who will physically take you yeah 
to a place that's going to help you. Yeah, yeah. Take Absolutely. you to an appointment. Make a phone call for you yeah. because you don't want to speak on the phone. You, mm-hmm. you, you, your head's pickled and you can't manage to get it out. Who will go to you to the, go with you to the doctors and yeah. speak on your behalf mm-hmm. in that's a non judgmental, non condescending way? Yeah. They're your they're that's your it. good friend. Mm-hmm. So. You know, you need that as an element of self help and an element of support of support and help, and then as it then 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 there are the outside agencies, yeah. those excellent, wonderful counsellors who have such experience of dealing with with these things, mm-hmm. and they take away the, the, the they they'll they'll help you understand mm-hmm. what's in your head yeah. and how it's hoodwinking you, and how they can how how to structure a recovery. Mm-hmm. And there are the, the, the medics who, who will give you perhaps the medication which you need to be able to, to go through the doors that you need to go through mm-hmm. because you need to have that, that, that element of, 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 of perhaps drug treatment that you need to get you because of you may be in a place where you need to do some, some drug-supported repair yeah. work. Mm-hmm. Then you need other things apart from that and so there's there's a lot of strands to it absolutely yeah yeah uh but i think the trusted friend thing and the self-help is is yeah. is, is is the the key thing and yeah because if you don't get those in place i don't think you can do the rest because yeah. you won't have the confidence you won't have the, the ability you won't have the you won't have the the kind of the the even the 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 verbal ability to communicate yeah. your issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. I think there's a lot in there, and mm-hmm. and I think teachers are very good at being told they have to look like they got it right all the time. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard for them to say, "I'm struggling. I yeah. can't do this," mm-hmm. because it's kind of not in the kind of the mentality that it's, you're. It's not in the nature. It's not in the most. nature. It's mm. not in the the kind of the job description either. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I, I think that they do find it tough. Yeah. Well, if any teachers listening, if you're feeling anything like that, you know, I urge you to reach out to that trusted friend. Trusted colleague. friend. Because on know. every staff, there are people who you wouldn't approach. Yeah. But there are people you would approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, I mean, um, one thing I would say is that if you're, a, if you're still a school which is, which is affiliated to the local authority, mm-hmm. you can go directly to occupational health. Okay. So please yeah. do that. Oc Health. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've had some. I had one of the most life changing experiences was to see somebody in South Tyneside Occupational Health, mm-hmm. who was a man who, who who helped me unlock things that have that have been massively massively mm-hmm. helpful to me. Yeah. And he was a very very gifted counsellor, um, and it was one of those like light bulb moments, you know. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So there are people out there to help you, you yeah. know. Um, and that is something which you can have access to as a council employee. Yeah. The issue comes, of course, is when you're a trust employee. Mm-hmm. Well, what does your trust, does your, does your school um, uh, academy trust have that in place? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, you, you may find that you, you're, you're hitting brick walls, mm-hmm. but I'm sure there'll be somebody on the staff you could ask without, yeah. without it being a dangerous question. Yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah. Or a, 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 a question which you shouldn't have asked. I'm yeah. sure there's somebody in every staff you could go to and talk to, even if it's not directly their responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They perhaps will be somebody who could signpost you. Yeah, you'd like um, to think so. I'm yeah. sure on every staff there is, but it might necessarily be the people who on on the flow chart of who you're meant to talk to that yeah, you're meant to talk to. So yeah. forget the flow charts. Go with someone who you know you can trust and you know you can yeah. speak with. Yeah. But do speak. Yeah. Do or if you can't get your trusted friend to speak on your behalf to yeah. take you or even to go and speak on your behalf without you being there. Uh, and I think that's because yeah. there's no shame in that. You, no. If you had a broken leg mm-hmm. and you you lost your crutches, yeah. you would say to somebody, can I just lean on your arm yeah. so I can walk? That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's that classic thing of we, we judge mental, mental health issues yeah. in a way which we would never judge physical health issues. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I need a wheelchair, yeah. but I'm scared to ask for one. No, you say I need a wheelchair. Yeah. I need some crutches. Yeah, you, you use yeah. that, you know. And in the mental health context, you know, use that friend as a crutch. Absolutely, you know? crutch in a crisis. Absolutely. And then allow you to get to that point where you don't need that crutch anymore because Absolutely. you've recovered. Yeah, 
self-confidence or your self-belief or whatever yeah. it is you know you've yeah. rediscovered your balance and, yeah and, and, I, and yeah. I, I guarantee you that you will then be a crutch for that other person at some no point doubt. no doubt. It, it, that, that is how it yeah. works it's just it and and it, it's funny i mean i'm a uh, you know I, I have certain uh, ways of looking at the world, which, which you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a person of faith, and I, I believe that, for example, you're never given what you can't cope with. Yeah. But sometimes we can't see that. Mm. But you need someone to help you see that and to, get, and to, to help you through it. Yes. Um, and then, if that person ever needs you, it tends to be the time when you're feeling good and you're yeah. in a position to be strong enough to help that person as yeah. well, or at least to help them, put them in contact with somebody who can help them. Yeah. So, there's that, you know, and I think it's a case of, you hear it in everything about mental health. Mm. You need to communicate. Absolutely. But if you can't find the words, mm -hmm. go and talk to somebody who you know really well and they yeah. will help you communicate yeah, and they'll absolutely. help you make that, that connection, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, communication is key, mm -hmm. you know. Courage. Yeah. Courage as well. It, it, I, I respect massively anybody who comes through my door because they've shown the bravery and courage to come in the first place. Yeah. You know. And do you know what it is? And and that's, the, the, it's, all, it's never lost on me. And, and, and then I think that, I, I think once you've done that, there, there is such a, it's such a contradiction in terms, there's such a strength in expressing that weakness. Absolutely. What is perceived as a weakness, but it isn't. Yeah. There's a strength in, in, in voicing that need for help. Yeah. Um, because it's hard to do it. it yeah, it's yeah. difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if your professional structure tells you that you're meant to be someone who is always in control, mm -hmm. when you don't feel in control, yeah, you get this double whammy of of of, of feeling you've let yourself down, letting others down, and it's, yeah. it's hard. It's yeah. really hard. But mm -hmm. you know, you'll never be worse for talking to someone. No. However hard it is, and, uh, and it's it's yeah. often the start of the recovery. That's yeah. the first step on the road to recovery. Yeah, it'll never have a, ne a negative impact. Absolutely no, not. No, I, I don't feel it will. It's, uh, feel it's it definitely will. A, a, a token. Token is uh, is the only way forward. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, because you can't solve all your own problems. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, as somebody who's now stepped out of the mm -hmm. teaching press profession completely now, um. I know you've worked or continue to work in music promotion in yeah. on your stage. Yes, I, I, my I was lucky enough. My sons were were very gifted musicians. Okay. Um, and they were given a, a break when they were very young, mm -hmm. um, and their band started being very popular when they were mid teens. Okay. And they've gone on to be very very successful. The band is called the Maverick Rejects. The Maverick Rejects, uh, okay. and they also play in a band called the Yo Man Funk Band, which is something they do to have an outlet for different style of music. Okay. They also play in. Uh, they do solo work, duo work, trio work in different formats mm -hmm. with different friends in the music. Yeah. Uh, okay. Community. They're now you know they're they're, they're late mid late twenties now, mm -hmm. but they now both work in the music industry. Okay. They have had such. Uh, a great grounding in in, in, in interpersonal skills mm. because of the music industry. Yeah. Um and I, I you know I don't know how I worked full time and then went and organized and I super I supervised them, I managed them, I mm -hmm. did all the diary for the band and and um now it's kind of shifted where the eldest one's taken that over. Okay. Uh, and now since I've retired, I've gone back to doing two roading uh, jobs a month, which is great. <laughs> I don't mind doing it because yeah. I, I know I'm going to get up and teach kids in the morning, uh, okay. which is great. You know, so I don't mind travelling back from uh, uh, wedding venues in the middle of Northumberland <laughs> at half past one in the morning, um, yeah. uh, having done a complete set up and take down but yeah i mean uh, bottom line is i then i then had this feeling that when i retired i, I, I thought i bet there are other people's kids out there mm -hmm. who are just as talented as my lads were yeah who also deserve the chance to shine okay and i set up this thing and i came up with a name only a stage and i just said right it's totally free mm -hmm. i'll provide the instruments i'll provide the pa system i'll provide all the stuff you need to perform yeah i'll provide the venue okay. i'll provide the structure i'll provide the organization all you've got to do is say i'd like to perform mm. i don't care what you perform to sing you play you sing and play yeah you, you you do whatever i will just provide that and i thought i wonder what will happen and mm. 
three years down the line, I'm working with the most incredible group of young people mm-hmm. and families. Yeah. And we have very regular events. Okay. Which give them those involved a great sense of achievement, a great sense of self expression, mm-hmm. a great sense of personal development and satisfaction and they, they, they love doing what they love. Yeah. I then look at the parents who watch the kids doing what they love and, and they can see that they're enjoying it and that has a massive effect on them. And that's yeah. great. And um, it, it's weird how it just is an extension of what I was talking to you about before. Mm. It For me, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's all about the music but it's got nothing to do with music. Yes. It's yeah. all about people coming and growing. Yeah. Not just in their ability to, to sing, to play, to no. perform, their no. confidence, yeah. their interpret, but also it's just as as people who and it's amazing that the kind of people who find the organization mm-hmm. it's amazing that they all have a very similar story. They tend to be kids who were the the only one in a year group who was into music. Okay. They were bullied, they were mocked, they were picked on mm-hmm. for being musical, mm-hmm. for going out for singing lessons, yeah. for carrying a guitar to school, for being the geek. Mm-hmm. And then they come together in this room yeah. and they meet people of their own tribe and they, they, they go, I'm not a geek. Yeah. And they grow in, they know that they have this group where it's safe, mm-hmm. they can talk about what because what they want to talk about the others want to talk about what they want to do the others want to do yeah they can find someone who if they're a guitar player and they don't want to sing there's a singer who needs a guitar player boom a duo yeah and you just have this thing about it's just it's all about letting them have that outlet where Mm. it's it's the it's the hole for their peg yeah And, and it's it's a different shape from the others and and you know I've had some incredible experiences, mm. and it's been wonderful. It is I feel so privileged to do it? And people say, "Why do you? Yeah, why don't you charge them? You'd make a fortune." I said, "It's not about that." Yeah. Nobody, you know, and the parents are so grateful. The kids are so grateful. I love being with them there, mm-hmm. and it's all about that just human development thing. Yeah. And and, and knowing that, like I said before, mm. there's the outlets aren't in school. Absolutely. For this, yeah, so yeah. they need something outside of school. Yeah. And out of that has be, has come another organisation, which is kind of which which for those who are who are now wanting to do it as a career or is is is, is a part time profession, and mm-hmm. now I've got an agency where they're of an age where they can be booked into venues and they do they do gigs, they get paid for them. Right. You know, it's kind of something which is 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 career orientated as well, mm-hmm. a bit more serious, a bit more formal. But it's something which, you know, uh, is is just great because that gives them a way of getting into the industry. It's that natural progression, isn't it? It is, you know? and, and you know, I didn't envisage that, but mm. it, it's it, it it the need for it became obvious. Yeah. Uh, and so I've got like these parallel things running, and mm-hmm. now I'm working with loads of venues around the northeast. There's a, there's a there's a kind of a network of venues who who support what we're doing, mm-hmm. and also who say, well, it's 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 not the same, you know, like. There's this kind of thing where in acoustic music, which a lot of them are, they're playing in, and, and where the, the typical acoustic player is a young man in his mid-twenties with a very well, well-groomed well beard <laughs> yeah. uh, who's very well-dressed, who yeah. sings a song. They all sing the same songs. Yeah. And a lot of mine are, they're, they're girls mm. who, for example, play keyboard and sing. Right. They are girls who, who, who have a, a, two girls and a duo. Okay. And it's 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 like okay. Mm-hmm. I was at Stack yesterday. We did a, a session at Stack yesterday where yeah. we had people on, and, and the comments I got were, "Hey, this is just so different from what we normally see, wow, okay. and it's equally as good." And I tell you what, it's I don't know, that, this is just different, mm-hmm. and it's it's just like, it's kind of off center, mm-hmm. but it's it's kind of well, that's my niche, you know. Yeah. And and so there are some venues love that, and yeah. so I've got regular venues where I put these older ones who mm-hmm. are into the profession go in and I'll then, then put a, a younger one who's coming along as a support act with them right, so okay. they're looking at the, that's their next step for them yeah. in the future mm-hmm. 
uh, and I've just met some incredible people and and, right. and some incredible performers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are just uh, like unbelievably gifted. Yeah. But they they they're not in the sort of like the X Factor, the yeah. that kind. We're not interested in that. We're the kind of the opposite of that. Yeah. yeah where it's yeah. like you know, you discover somebody who who at the age of sixteen, there's one girl age of sixteen mm-hmm. who's already got a full album of our material, original material. Wow. So I'm lucky enough to say to her, Sophie, your songs are good enough. Mm -hmm. When you play them, Mm -hmm. they get such a reaction. I'll put you in contact with my eldest son who's got a recording studio. He'll do you a good deal. You'll not, you go to one of these other places, they'll rip you off. He'll do it. He'll do me a favour, go and record your album. Yeah. Wow. And like, you know, it's all, I know people who could, Kind of accommodate yeah. these ones who are coming through, yeah. and it's great. There's a there's a real reaction there that like we love this, yeah, because it's kind of it's a kind of subculture, mm-hmm. but it's it's a very it's something that's really interesting, and I get a massive amount yeah. of satisfaction out of that. Yeah, um, like I just sat yesterday watching the crowd at Stack and and we were watching these people playing, mm-hmm. and you could see they were like, wow, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They were, you could see them saying how much they were enjoying it yeah. and saying, this isn't the same as we always get, you know? Yeah, yeah. The same songs by different people mm-hmm. uh, who pretty much look the same. Yeah. And and I'm thinking, yeah, that's great. Yeah. You know? And um, that's a great venue, the stack at, at Seaburn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been there, you see, because yeah, right. my eldest works there uh-huh. and, uh, and, 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 and he's on very good terms with the... Um, Mm-hmm. operations manager so right. we have two hours a month one for the younger ones yeah. on an evening mm-hmm. during the week and then a weekend one for the the, the ones who are about to be breaking yeah. over the circuit yeah, yeah. who are very who are good enough to yeah. be there on a weekend mm-hmm. in a slot which is quite sort of high high um quality slot yeah and several of them are now being taken on by stack fantastic yeah. And that's a way, and you know, because yeah, they're good yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and it's not because it's not because they do. They, I'm being done a favour for that. No, it's no. because they are good enough. Yeah. And the fella said, "Right, Sean, give me their details, and we'll contact them, and we'll put them yeah, on, yeah. on the roster." Mm-hmm. Excellent. Fantastic. So yeah, yeah, I mean, they get a great experience, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 uh, like my motto is, if 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 you're good enough, you're old enough. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. In regards to that, it's sixteen and having a full album's worth of original material. And you know, I'd, I'd, and that's, it's not just good yeah. for a sixteen-year-old. Yeah, These yeah. songs are; they have depth. They have, they, you know, they, they have hooks. They have yeah. depth. They have yeah. they have wit, and they have they have uh, that person just needs to be seen by the right people. Yeah, yeah, you know. And it's it's great to be involved. Fingers with that. crossed, there will be. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, it, it's lovely to see that. Yeah, it's yeah lovely yeah. to see, and, and as long as they're happy, that's that's all I'm bothered yeah. about. And you have, you know, you have just as much passion about that as you did about all of those years in teaching and stuff. It's, it's, it's almost like re-energizing. It, it is, man. It, it, it's outside the system, you know. It's, yeah. it's all about. It's the same thing. That's all about personal development. It's all about yeah. using the gifts and talents you were given. Mm. And it's all about helping people use them and giving them, giving them like, oh yeah, yeah, you've you've got this energy, you've got this ability, you don't know what to do with it. How about mm. we'll give you an outlet? Yeah. And then off oh, you need the album. Ah, oh, so and so. You need a show reel shooting. Yeah. I'll show you so and so. You know. And your gifts and talents within that, as an organizer and a facilitator that, a facilitator. and a friend and yeah, a supporter, yeah. is all there and coming to the fore again. It's it's very much the skills that I developed as a teacher, yeah. and, and I I do a lot of support for the families as well because there's families that have been that are struggling because that that the the parents are devastated that their kids were bullied at school, yeah. and then I you know I help them with this bit of advice when they come to me. It's not sort of you know it's just something on informally, but mm-hmm. it kind of word gets around. Uh, and I'll get I'll get I'll get direct messages from parents. Look, I'm, they're not doing it this month because they're struggling with this. And I'll say, yeah. well, you know, I'll have a word if you want. And mm. then and, 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 and you know, and then it kind of I've also built up like a a group of the senior ones who like peer counsel as well. Yeah, yeah, much like the more experienced teachers. It's it's you know it's, if it works it teachers. works yeah, and it yeah. doesn't matter what who, yeah. if, if the system works. Absolutely. Try it out. Absolutely. Try it out. You know. No. And it's lovely. It, it it's it's and it's it's all of the 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 satisfaction I get from that. Mm. It it it's I'm not it I'm not needing to have it as a business. Yeah. Because I'll never be a businessman. No. Um. 
but it's just all about the, the satisfaction that yeah. I see on and mm. the sense I get and also the seeing them yeah. fulfilling their ability and whatever yeah so. So that's yeah. it, and that reward that you get is is that, and that helps my mental health. That yeah. helps me when it's when yeah. it's when it's organising it all. It's a big payoff, mm. uh, and yes, I get frustrated with certain things, but but the, the payoff is massive. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that that's another thing that that helps me stay balanced and 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 to be able to be a still a good father and a good the, as good a husband as possible. <laughs> um. Uh, and and it you know it helps me stay where I need to be as well fantastic fantastic keeps me young as well uh, yeah when, I, when I'm <laughs> I'm now at the stage where there's these these kids are coming to perform and, and, I, and I taught their parents so yes. they're coming in and I think oh my goodness yes. you know and it's, it's it's about five or six of them whose kids have, right. are now coming through and they're working with me and, I, and the parents were my students once so it's a lovely a lovely experience the, the passage of time oh, oh and yeah, <laughs> so we're like oh, you've never changed oh yeah. believe me i think i have <laughs> excellent no well um listen sean i really really appreciate your time today it's, i thoroughly um, enjoyed it film and it's it, it, I, I just i just hope that uh, you know it's been useful and it's some it, it strikes a chord with people and mm. and that they that it, somehow they get something from this that'll It'll perhaps help them in some way, in some way, you know. Let's hope so, yeah. That I mean, that's the whole point in this this sort of this podcast is to just continue to grow the mental health conversation and, and help people to be, you know, Absolutely. maybe a bit better than they were before, you know, and self develop, yeah. keep encouraging on. So, um, and the the experiences that you've had, the experiences that you've shared. I'm sure I will ring ring uh, bells with some people. Well, and, I hope so, Phil. And I would just like yeah. to say also, I think it's a. a your idea here, I think, is fantastic for, for 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 to help exactly what you said that was the benefit of me talking about it. I think we've got to acknowledge the fact that it was your idea to do this. So I think it's 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 a great a great use of time and and, yeah. and of your your experience and your 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 gifts as well. So well done, and I, and I hope that um, I hope that uh, you know the rest of the series continues in a in a helpful way for people. Thank you very very You're much. Very welcome. Yeah, much Lovely appreciated. To you. Okay, take care. And thank, thank you very much. Thanks. Now, cheers now.